We played the final call from the Sox win yesterday in Seattle to get into Maz's opening take, which is Red Sox. Go ahead, Anthony. Okay, so a mediocre team goes on the road in a four-game series. Usually you're content to come out of there with two out of four. And then from that standpoint, you should be content. Red Sox played competitively, I would say, uh, in, the all, in all four of the games. The pitching was good, as you heard there from Kevin Euclid and Dave O'Brien. Good, 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 blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you what my concern is. Raphael Devers is out. They lose both games. Kenley Jansen's out. They lose the game. So I come back to the same thing, which is, had they put a little bit more into this team, it wouldn't be so trick-or-treat. And I came away from the weekend saying, if Devers goes down, you're done. You're done. He's the one legitimately, you know, Casas maybe, but he's the one legitimately dangerous hitter in your lineup that the other that the opponent fears. And for that matter, if Kenley Jansen goes down, your bullpen already feels a little bit thin to begin with. Then I guess Martin, Chris Martin would close, and then then what? So, like, I'm frustrated by the fact that, yes, it is better baseball than we have been accustomed to seeing in the last couple of years, but it wouldn't have taken much to build it up a little bit more just in terms of depth to pad your roster a little so you could withstand over 162 the problems that are inevitably going to arise. Well, because they aren't that bad. They're not that bad. They never were that bad. They're just now the margin for error is razor thin. Because, if, again, if Devers or Jansen or Martin, and Jansen and Martin are older guys who barely pitched in spring training because I think Cora wants to save the bullets. And, you know, Jansen's already battling a back thing. Uh, Martin had a thing in his forearm. So as soon as you lose a piece or two and you're going to lose somebody, you're in trouble. So that, that, that to me, is frustrating. Yeah, so I want to piggyback off this because, believe it or not, I watched all four games. And so uh, I, the thing I don't like is some of the talk, I've, I've both heard it and I've seen it online, that, well, they probably should have went 3-1, and one, maybe even swept the Mariners this week. Well, weekend. don't you think they should have gone 3-1? and one? Yes. No, because of the thinness of the, the the roster that Maz is talking about. So we're going to ignore the fact that their best player, Raphael Devers, was unavailable in the second game. I mean, I tuned in like the second inning on Friday night, and all, all of a sudden I'm like, wait, where's Devers? Oh, he's out with a short, sore shoulder? A sore shoulder, the second game out of 162. What the hell is a spring training regimen? Fries in a shake? I'd say the same thing for Kenley Jansen. Already dealing with a bad back. Does he look like he's in good shape? He looks like me. Like, these guys, so it's not just the organization for the them not investing further in this team because they do look pretty good. They are competitive. Some of these guys bear a personal responsibility, too. Devers hurt the second game, misses two out of the, the four games this weekend because of a sore shoulder because, what, he swung too hard in the first game, belting a home run, or what? Again, what was the spring training regimen? Did you put in some work this you know in this offseason? Same with Kenley Jansen. And, so, and how about the lineup without him? So the Friday night game, they lose one zip. I do like Bobby Dahlbeck. I think it was the seventh. Was it the seventh? First and third. He's up two outs. Did anyone have any confidence of him not striking out at that at, at that point? He nope. blows. But he's on this roster because, again, the organization won't invest. So my biggest takeaway is, yeah, they're competitive to a point, and they will be. Because if you really care about this team, this opening weekend actually has to kind of suck because if you really give a crap about them, if they invested a little bit more, they would be in it. They well, would be pretty okay. good. This is true. They still should have won three or four. Yeah. When you're up two runs on Saturday night. Uh, and and so you can, uh, between a, a bad error by Abreu out in right field, I think it was the key play in that whole inning, some questionable managerial decisions by Alex Cora, uh, pitching two certain guys and pitching certain guys, the injury to Jansen. All things being equal, if you have Jansen and Abreu just doesn't, butcher that ball in right field you should walk out so that I, at that point that's not the roster i don't think you know up two runs in the 10th inning on saturday well jansen was a loss i mean not having jansen there was a factor but the well, bottom line is still you're up two, put the game away well, what i mean is but that's injury not roster i mean you have a closer right you have that's not one of the positions where you haven't spent or don't have a guy you have a guy he's just out of shape so i think there's plenty still to, to second guess uh, you know, I thought overall it was a worthwhile weekend. Some things that interest me. You know, if, if I asked you quickly, who is the star of the weekend for the Red Sox? Who is the star of the weekend? The center fielder, Raffaella, I would say. The kid kind of pops. I mean, I, I would lean him towards him, too. So he was, a, he was the most entertaining guy to watch. I would agree with that. But I think Andrew Bailey, this new pitching coach, get ready. Get ready to be sick to death 
of listening to guys like Milliken and the Red Sox people shove Andrew Bailey down your throat. Get ready for it. Yeah, I hope it works. I, I you know, and I say hope it works. They threw one the starters now. One third of their pitches were fastballs. I mean, it was a completely different approach. It was a noticeable approach. Yeah, with again what Maz is talking about. They were throwing all junk, all off speed stuff until Whitlock made an adjustment in like the third inning yesterday and then started throwing more fastballs. But either way, the the weakness of the team, the th- the part of the team that we thought was going to fall apart, uh, all performed, all delivered. There's a distinct approach. Guys are throwing new pitches, including the bullet slider, the gyro slider, whatever. We saw that yesterday. And it's like, uh, oh, get get ready for Andrew Bailey to be shoved down your throat as like some sort of miracle worker, worker savior. And that's already starting to bug me. But, oh, by the way, uh, you did see results from it this weekend, didn't you? Yes. I, but, I like the hesitation in your voice. Yes, but. You think you can pitch all year doing that? And uh, when I say that. Whitlock, you mean? Th- all of them. That's a lot of torque on those arms that have injury history. A lot of torqueage. A lot of torque. I don't know if it can hold up. My hope is that that this was a one series thing because Sean McAdam had an item today that they deemed Seattle to be a good fastball hitting team, so they did the opposite. Fine. Good. I'm okay with that if it's a series to series thing. If you're going to do it all year, you think Tanner Houck's arm is going to hold up doing that or Garrett Whitlock's arm is going to hold up or, or any of the rest of them? Bayo? I have my doubts. And by the way, Bayo's Bayo's best pitch is a two seam fastball. Ditto for Whitlock. So now you're going to go the whole year and throw it one third of the time. Well, just watching that game early, I felt like Whitlock was at 85 miles an hour the whole day. He was until again he started throwing some more fastballs a little bit later to get strikeouts. But he also threw uh, 61 pitches in the first three innings. 40, so I think it was 49 in the first two. So you're not going anywhere doing that. Okay. So well, anyway, I I just. I think the Sox were a worthwhile product over the weekend. There's things to talk about. So we're going to talk about it. 617-779-0985. Celtics uh, rebound and win in New Orleans, but we're still sort of stuck on how they lost those games at Atlanta. There's a Bruins thought for you. And, of course, we'll get to the NFL draft. My opening take quickly is that, uh, yes, I am scared to take a guy. I am deathly scared to take a quarterback. Uh, Not that you shouldn't take one. You should take one, and you're going to take one. It just scares me. I don't feel good about it. Uh, I find it interesting just listening over the weekend, the amount of people who are scared not to take one, who are scared that they're going to lose out on somebody. And I don't know what's silly or me or them. Like, you must draft J.J. Mc- you must come home with Drake May, J.J. McCarthy, or one of these guys, or else. The, the fear on the other side, I feel, is just as bad, if not worse, than my fear.